Well, there it is. Hey guys, this is the day after Hero League was brought out for Europe and the start of the closed beta. So I wanted to give you my experiences and my opinions of Hero League so far. My experiences thus far is that it is definitely a lot of fun to play because it's like Versus, but it actually has a purpose to it, which is why I enjoy ranked play, such as what I did in Warcraft 3. If there's ladders there, it's going to give it a bit more of a kick. There's more on the line. There's more reason for you to be invested. So it's definitely a good thing so far. But having said that, this is only one day afterwards. And I've played one game today, which is what you're probably going to be seeing as some of the footage of this video whilst I chat away. Is a game I played with Arthas. And it was my shortest game. 11 minutes 25 seconds, something like that, on Haunted Minds, which is typically known as the shortest um, map, battleground, uh, time-wise, in comparison to all the others. So that's something I wanted to talk about, is that there is definitely a large difference in the length of time it takes to complete some of these battlegrounds. Obviously, Blizzard want to aim for around the 20-minute mark, I believe. And uh, for the most part, they've achieved that. However, the majority of my games were played on um, Garden of Terror and Black Hearts Bay, which are notorious for being very long, particularly Black Hearts Bay. It definitely takes a long time to complete that. So, yeah, there needs to be a little bit more um, map flexibility. However, I've played eight games in total, as you can see. Six wins, two losses. That's my current stats. And um, I've got the same maps the majority of times. So I've actually been writing down the statistics and I wanted to get your guys' opinions on this. Whether you think this is valuable at all, any of this information that I'm giving you right now. Whether you like this type of video, I'll probably try to bring these out quite regularly. Just my thoughts and uh, maybe guides or ideas, opinions, suggestions, that kind of thing. But let's go over what I've done so far. So... I've played eight games in total since yesterday, one game including today, so seven games yesterday. And through those eight games, I've achieved rank 45, so you get 200 points for a win at this stage and about 60 points for a loss, so you can't really lose if you're just playing all the time. And I figure that's probably the way it's going to play out. Until you get to the, le the higher ranks, rather, like within the rank 1 to 5, I imagine that the win-loss ratio is going to be much more strict. So if you win a game, I assume you'll get like 100 points. If you lose a game, then you'll probably lose 100 points. So it's going to be quite even. That way, it's not so much a case of, well, if you just play indefinitely, you will get rank 1. However, that is still a possibility, and, well, we'll cross that road when we get to it. I'm still rank 45 at the moment, so we'll see how we get on. And uh, as for the games, they definitely play very much like Versus. People are random, and people pick, well, let's say not necessarily the best heroes. The last game I was expecting to lose, but we didn't. We won it super quickly, and um, everyone played smartly and well, but the hero choices were a bit odd. We had like two DPS already, a Thrall and a Fala, and then some guy picked Jaina, and the other guy <laughs> started going nuts at him. And he was like, I'm going to report you after this game. So, as you can imagine, that sort of style from League of Legends or Dota 2 is already starting to sip through into Hero League now that they're ranked. People are getting a bit um, elitist as to what people should be picking and choosing. And I think you should pick within fairness, which is the reason why I did play Arthas last game. Is essentially, I saw the situation, I saw, right, we don't have a tank. I want to play Arthas then. I don't mind playing Arthas. I was going to play someone else, but if... Your team, I was the last person to pick, if your team requires something, then it, you'll probably best play that role. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win, but if we didn't have the tank, then it might have been a lot tougher. You don't know. So you, I, I, for example, when I'm thinking about the wins in this game, I was likening it a little bit in terms of my experiences to Hearthstone, somewhat in terms of the RNG factor. Like the way, the reason why I don't like Hearthstone that much is it's just pure RNG. You can either win really easily or lose really easily and there's very little in between. Here is the storm bridges the gap a little bit better, but I'm solo queuing and all of these statistics that I'm making right now are going to be based purely off solo queue. If I do a duo queue or a larger team, then I will basically make a separate line of statistics for that. So that way all of my statistics, my win-loss ratio, etc., at least on my, um, spreadsheet are going to be purely based off solo queue and as solo queue it is very random who you get and how they play it's supposed to be pitted on a similar skill level but at this stage in the game 
I could get like the biggest noob in the world or the greatest player in the world. It's completely random at this stage. Maybe once I get higher ranks, um, we'll get a lot more decent players, but we'll see. I'm going to show you the spreadsheet that I use. Now, this was copied from... Um, I used to use this for Hearthstone. I, on half Pwn, there was um, a deck that I was checking, the Handlock deck, and he had a guide to uh, making statistics as well. So you can see there's the whole list here. If you're interested in this, then I don't know how to get it to you other than trying to look it up. Try Googling it, but I don't have the link to that website anymore where I got it from, even though it was half pwn. I don't know directly where the link came from. But either way, the way it works is you put in the deck that you were playing, and then you put in your wins on the left box and your losses on the right box versus the race. So Druid. So I won seven games and lost six games. And the way I played it was essentially till 50%. And if I got lower than 50%, I'll move on to another deck and try that out. And then you can see Rush Lock was more successful. But these are only valuable once you've played like 100 plus games. And that's what I'm going to be doing with Heroes of the Storm. The stats I've got at the moment, 6-2, don't mean very much. I hope you can see this spreadsheet. Otherwise, it's not going to make much sense. But I'm going to clarify it as much as possible in case you can't see it. And the point I'm making here is that, for example, we're looking at Arthur's here. Uh, I've compared the hero, so it's not decks versus classes, it's hero versus battleground. So that's Black Hearts Bay, that's Curse Hollow, that's Dragonshire, that's Garden of Terror, and Haunted Mind is what I played today. So I've got one win on Black Rock, I keep calling it Black Rock Bay, it's not that, but it's Black Hearts Bay, and one loss. So that's my stats for Arthas on that. Whereas on Garden of Terror, I won a game. And Haunted Minds, I won a game. Now, you've got to take this with a pinch of salt. Everything with a pinch of salt. This is what I'm saying. It's not as RNG as Hearthstone, but it's not too far off it, in my opinion. You could be very lucky and get 10 wins and zero losses, and then you'll be like, oh, wow, I guess I'm really good. Or you could get super unlucky and get zero wins and 10 losses and be like, oh, I must suck. It's just the way it is. It's like four versus four random team. It's quite heavily based on your teammates and how much they screw up, basically. How suicidal they are. You're only as good as your teammates to an extent. Especially in a game like Heroes of the Storm, you can do a lot. I can, I will do as much as I can do to effect, effectively give us a win. I look at it percentage-wise. I will do everything that I think is most valuable at the time, be it mercs, creeps, pushing lane, whatever it is, that is going to give us the highest win rate chance. Even if it means sacrificing myself to keep some mates alive, teammates alive, that I don't like the way they play, but if they stay alive, then they can then go on and push the lane. I will do whatever it takes percentage wise so I will sacrifice myself needlessly not needlessly but importantly what what's the opposite of needlessly anyway you get the point and uh, what I'm doing here with this statistic board is I will get back to you regarding these stats on a periodical basis be it weekly or monthly and we're gonna see how things play out I'm gonna play more and more classes as you can see one thing I was interested in trying out, is you can see I've got Arthas, Nocebo, Sigara, Fausta. I deliberately played four, just to see whether another one would pop up here. But you can only see three heroes, and I assume that as soon as I play, say, another game with Faustad, his portrait would overtake Sigara, because I would have more games to play with Faustad. So that's what I think is going to happen there. What would be a nice feature is if you could, like, have this little go left or go right, where you can scroll between the different heroes that you've played and see their win-loss ratios. But that's pretty much why I've made that, well, I've been using this spreadsheet. So that way I can work out my stats. So, yeah. You get the idea, and as the games go by and as the heroes go by, I will put down every time I win a game or every time I lose a game. So, not only is it interesting to try to find out gradually on a pinch by salt, you know, an average as to how good a hero might be. Again, you could get super lucky and get 10 wins with Nazebo and think he's really good, but is that wasn't the case. It might have just been the case that you got very good battlegrounds or that favoured him, or you got very good teammates. But if I play enough games, statistically, a well-rounded average should come through. Now, I don't expect to get a well-rounded average until I play pretty much about 50 games with like each hero, which I don't necessarily see myself doing anytime soon. But, like I say, I will keep on top of it. So that's the t statistics. Those are my experiences and my opinions so far at the Hero League. It's a lot of fun to play. There's more on the line, so you're more invested. It's definitely good. But it's very stressful when you're losing because you have almost no impact on the game compared to Dota or 
League of Legends and I would like a way to have more impact and I hope that Blizzard do find a way to implement that into the system. That doesn't go against their whole philosophy. Oh, this is a team-based hero brawler. It's about team and stuff and shared experience. Just even items. I know people, they can't really go back on themselves on items, but it is still closed beta. There's opportunities. If you guys have any ideas, I'd be very interested in hear from you because I would like to make a video at some point down the line listing the things that basically I would like to see in um, Heroes of the Storm before it actually goes live. And I'm making a bunch of notes as it is, but if there's any more things that you guys have to say, then feel free to let me know. Otherwise, that's going to do it for now. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, then subscribe, like, and comment, and obviously let me know what you guys think. I'm listening. So, I'll keep you posted, and there'll be more content down the line. Thank you very much for watching again. Take care. Bye.